Joe James. Play basketball for Ike Basketball Club here in Greece. What's going on? I was born in South America, a country of Guyana. I spent there for the first eight years, seven, eight years of my life. Um, it was just me and one of my other brothers because uh, when you born in a, a country, the third world, a country like that is like for your parents and stuff, they have to leave first, get themselves situated for you to come to the States to make a better person of yourself, a better life for yourself. So uh, it was, I have five brothers and three sisters. Uh, my younger sister, she left with my parents two years prior and three of my other brothers and the other, my two older sisters were just older. So it was just me and one of my brothers there for two years with just my older sister and my uncles that uh, protected us and took care of us. So it was just me and him there and uh, for two years and then we got the opportunity. Everything went through, visa, whatever. I'm, I'm young, I don't know. I just know I'm waiting to go to America to be with my family and start my new life there. So uh, we came here in uh, 93, me and my other brothers uh, to New York, to Brooklyn, New York. And um, from then on, I've just been, that's where my life began, to be honest. I have a whole other life and some memories in my mind of my eight, seven, eight years, seven, eight years in Guyana that it's, it's seemed like a distant memory, to be honest now. But if I sit back and think, I probably couldn't uh, fester up some things. Well, to be honest, I, I for the time, for the parents, I, I'm guessing it must be very, very difficult to know you left two sons behind. But you also got to look at it. You left them in good hands in a way with your uncles and your older sister. You left them in their good hands. But to be broken apart like that at such a young age, I mean, when she left, my mom, my, my dad left, I guess we were, what, six, six, seven? I mean, we were six, seven. So it's like, wow. So I guess for them, it probably was more difficult than us just realizing they went on, quote unquote, a longer extended vacation before we see everyone else and we'll get our chance, opportunity to follow up. But for at that time, I honestly don't feel like I remember the feeling of being left back or what it was. I just know it was something that probably would just have to happen before we just reunite. It is a, but you don't consider it breaking up though. It's like a, it's like a separation based on circumstances like we didn't like it wasn't a friction to make a breakup it's just like a um hey hey we got to go here your paperwork or whatever it is didn't come through yet you and your brother have to be here for a little extended time but we'll re reunite it was no malice or no ill feeling because we didn't feel like we were just left you know what i'm saying so it was just like a man, I wish I could go now, but you'll come later type thing. It wasn't, but you always want to feel like stick together, be strong, stay connected with your family because at such a young age, all you can know is that you have is your family and nothing else. Life was, I don't, I don't remember any uh, negative, like at such a young age, I felt like I left, I, I was free. And to be young and say you were free is kind of weird, but I felt like I was, I was pretty free. I was tough. I was, I was matured for my age, which is six, seven. I feel being seven in Guyana nowadays is like for me thinking back then is probably for my mental. I feel like I had is probably was like of an eleven, twelve year old kid now in the states because it's just a more tougher upbringing, a more independence, a more, like, you, you're not with your parents, you're with your older sister and your uncles, and seeing seven, seven year olds now, it's like, a, you look at them like they're three, four years old, it's, it's kind of a different dynamic uh, from when I felt like I grew up. I have a six year old son, and I'm an I'm a uncle of, of seven, year, seven year olds, and I'm imagining me at that age is like, they're like kids to me, and I was a kid also, but I felt I was more, uh, I was more matured. But I don't, I don't remember no negative. Like me and my brothers, we, my brother that was with me, we're pretty close. We did a lot together. We, uh, everything was fun, man. I, I, I don't remember any. It's probably hard times that I can't remember. All my memories, I feel it was just 
being free, being being a loose cannon, being a headache, being a nutcase, being a child, man, that just was having fun and enjoying life the best he can at that time. Didn't even know the name, didn't even know the sport, didn't even, I can't even, to be honest, I don't even remember. And of course, at that time, 91, 92, 93, of course, basketball was big. Michael Jordan was probably taking over the NBA in the States, but I know nothing of basketball. I can't remember no memory of basketball at that time at in Guyana. Like not even not even one. I don't even think I watched the TV in Guyana, to be honest. I don't even think I like watched the TV. Maybe I did. I don't even remember like simple stuff in Guyana, like TV. Of course, I probably was in a car, but I don't remember being in a car in Guyana. Like, things of that nature, I don't even remember. I just always remember, like, being outside, running around, playing at, playing dominoes, <laughs> like, things of that. Like, that's what I remember. But I, no basketball, not even one. Mm-mm. I was introduced to it when I, when I got to Brooklyn, New York. To be honest, I wish I could remember the ball in my hand. I remember playing basketball at such a young age and I picked it up pretty fast because I remember playing in like from I came to the States when I was about eight and I remember playing basketball and loving basketball at nine so during that during that transition that span of course it was during that time that I, uh, I picked it up and I, I had to fall in love with it because I felt I felt like in fourth grade I was pretty good at it to myself so I had to fall in love with it right away and pick up on it fast. I don't ever remember in dribbling the ball and not being able to control it, not being able to like shoot it or or throw it to the rim without a good form or anything like of that nature. So I feel uh from me from the time I can remember just being on the court, playing in the park, playing in elementary school, I just I just knew the love I had for it instantly. So that's my fondest or my youngest memory of it is just how long I've loved the game. Uh, being a father, man, is the it's probably the, my greatest achievement to me per se. And it's also, to if we're being totally honest, it's also something that I, I feel that um, I'm not the best that I can be. Only, only because I'm away from my son. My son isn't here with me. <clears throat> he isn't here with me and... Um, and it's a way it makes me strive harder because I know I'm working for him to, you know, try to secure something better for his future. But I just feel like when when my son got here, it just gave me a different insight, a different focus. But with me being separated from his mother and my son not being here for me and he living in the States and I'm not here. To me personally, I feel I feel like father is my greatest accomplishment of being able to bring a kid into the world. But it's also in a way, sometimes I feel as until I'm stopped from this playing basketball and he's next to me more, I feel it could be also my biggest letdown that I always think about only because he's not with me, not because I don't do my job that I can as a father, which I feel like to my best of my abilities I do. But I just feel like him, the responsibility of being a father and me not being next to him, I'm not fully, I'm not fully doing because I'm here. And in a way, it makes me it makes me think of uh, my parents when they left me. If 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 it kind of made them feel the same way, or if they knew this was just a timetable thing and it, they'll be fine. And it was and it's probably more simple for them being that they have four or five other kids to worry about instead of the two that's in Guyana. But me me personally, I love being a father. And the, every time I get to spend with my son is a uh, it's a feeling of like I won the cup over and over again. <laughs> um, it was a man. It was to like going. I'm on my way to the hospital because I wasn't there because um, how the day went by because he wasn't of natural birth. He had a C-section, so I got the call going back to the hospital that he's already there. So it, it it's a different dynamic of waiting waiting when you're underway you just know that walking up the steps getting on the elevator you know your son is born you know he's there so it was um 
I walk, he, he was already cleaned up, dressed, and uh, he was actually sleeping in his little, his first little cubicle or bed, whatever you call it. And um, I actually had a video of it, and I, it's in one of these phones or email, and I wish I could find it, but I'm just staring at him, looking at him, just looking at him, and he starts to cry, like, like, dead, like just starts to cry. He's like two hours old, maybe. He's just crying, so I'm like, and I just put my hand on his stomach and rub him back and forth, and he just stops. And, you know, stuff like that is so cliche, so I don't know if it's, if it, but to me, it, it, even in that cliche moment, I'm like, wow, I wonder if he like knew that dad is here or that his father's touching him, so he just stopped crying. It's, it's, it's like a, you always think of that because it's like, wow, he knew that I'm crying, that I'll protect him. So I always feel like I always try to be his biggest protector, and that's why sometimes I feel as if like it's a letdown because I'm not always around him to protect him. Being around kids for so long, you pick up on on things they could do at a certain age, and um, and I, I think I figured out before his mother, and we kind of battled on that also because I'm telling her like, hey, little man, little man needs some extra attention because I feel as if he could be he could be autistic, and she and I wasn't around, but I could see our traits, and she took it in a more so negative way. Uh, because she is around him, and no parent wants to hear. As much as you love your kid, you you know you everything you love about them. The biggest thing you love about them is them be able to one day have their free independence, and you can control some of. But with with when you hear and learn something like that, it, it strips away a lot of dreams and hope you had for your son, your daughter, whoever's battling with that situation at the time. So me telling her, we went back and forth on, we went back and forth dealing with that. I knew earlier and I'm telling her like, hey, let's get him to this. And more so down the line, she finally realized that he's lacking in some things. And in him battling with that daily and going through it with that, he's made tremendous strides. She's done a hell of a job with him. Uh, she's made, he's made a uh, tremendous stride. And I also always feel like because of that, I do, sometimes also feel more so sad about it because I'm not around to fully like that also makes me feel like a letdown because I'm not around him fully to to help him in that way all the time and and the work she does with him like I commend her for it to for being so strong with him and teaching him and etc so whenever we get on the phone on the FaceTime and stuff to me to sit there and watch his progress is like it's like, wow, but I also know that as much as sunny days, there's going to be some tough days ahead for him, and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll be around. It's weird. Every You always say, why me, God? And more so in the, the stuff you view as negative, and that's just the way everyone works. Like, like I won the cup, or did, translating to basketball, I won the cup. I got a good contract here. I got a good contract before I graduated college. But in all the good things, you don't say, why me? You feel, you know what I'm saying? You feel as if it's, you feel as if, if you worked hard for it or you deserved the, all the good. But the negative is always why me? And it's kind of a, and I looked and I always sit back and wonder, honestly, why me? You never, it's nothing you could prevent. It's nothing you could. I don't know what it is. I don't know how it happens. It's nothing. It's just luck of a draw. I don't know, man. But for sure, uh, time and time I've said, why me? Why? Because I felt, I feel like as much as I love my son, I also feel as if, if he wasn't, uh, if he wasn't autistic, we'll have a better relationship in terms of him being able to travel and come and see me during the year because he doesn't travel on airplanes and stuff a long distance of flight to come to come see me and I've been in Europe seven years now and he has never once to come over because of it so I feel as if he didn't he could spend like a couple months here and you know what I'm saying and it'd be a better dynamic but with his with his diagnosis is harder so uh the most of those times when I'm over here some days I'm just looking at videos at the summertime looking at pictures I always think like damn why me well, I can't have my little man. I see every team I've been on, they have families with their kids and they're just around and playing. Like, like 
even doing an interview like right now, he could have been like sitting in the chair right there. It's just it's just a stuff like that you think about like why me, and uh, but what what could I do? I can't I can't uh, control I can't control him and his diagnosis. Now I just can only help as much I can for him to be better. Well, it's be it's, it's good being in New York. He uh he has speech classes. He has fine motor skill classes. He in the summertime we've done swimming. I've went with him swimming classes and stuff like that to just, because at a point in time you have to, he and he's been getting better at a point in time, he, he, he has to know that he'll, he has to be an independent man. So what you, when you find out your, your son is autistic, it, you being an athlete, it takes out all the dreams of him following your footstep, playing sports, him, et cetera. But it opens a, a, another another space in your mind to understand now what can he do for his life like he can't it's weird you always see your your smaller version of yourself and imagine him doing what you're doing but that's your life now now what he could do with his life and in new york it is a lot a lot of stuff that can help him it's such a it's a place where it's so broad man it has foundation of every little things and we we find some stuff he's been into swimming he's been into Speech class. He's been doing little things, and uh, every time I come back, he learns and he picks up something new. So uh, I think it's working well. I never, to be honest, I never got. I never have a really. I, I might have had two conversations, maybe three conversations with uh, with my friends. I know I've never had a a, a conversation so much in depth with autism with my family, and him, and I. In a way, I actually like that. Like they just accepted him for who he is. It wasn't a conversation of, oh man, like, damn or that's sad, bro, et cetera, et cetera. Because uh, there was never that type of conversation with anyone. It was just I, I had a conversation with my sister because, to be honest, my sister was watching some. At my aunt house, uh, rest in peace, my aunt passed away, the aunt I'm talking about. My sister was watching some on TV, and she she had sent me a message, like, hey, bro, I think Jalen might, might, Jalen might be autistic. And he was one and a half at the time. She was the first person, and from then on, from then on, I feel like, the, I like me and, me and my sister, the one of my youngest sister I'm talking about, we talk about if it's anyone I talk about on on the grand scheme of things, on from my lowest points to my highest points of my family members, it's her, because our relationship is is a different dynamic than me and my other family members. We like we talk every day, we we communicate back and forth with each other on things that on, on real life things of me and any other, any one of my other family members. So me and I have in depth conversations. But it was when we talked about Jalen, was her just telling me to open my eyes on it, and then when I did open my eyes on it, it wasn't. It was the next conversation was, "All right, what could we do now?" It was never them telling me or feeling sorry for me, things like that. And I had a couple conversations with one of my good friends, Malcolm, about it, um, my friend Morph about it, and my friend Phil about it. We we've, we've talked about we've talked about Jalen and his uh his condition more so more so in the friendly basis than any one of my friends. I think it's a constant feeling because roller coasters go up and down in, in terms of what you're feeling. It was just a straight, it was a straight like, damn, like, wow. It wasn't a, it, it's a feeling that's honestly still here today. It's not, because you have to deal with it basically forever. So it's not a roller coaster feeling that I feel like is a, Oh man, you, it's a fun. Some people love roller coasters, you know what I'm saying? So this feeling is a is a constant feeling, and it's a it's just like a man a tough. It builds character, to be honest. It puts it puts a lot of stuff in perspective. It makes me feel as if uh, I can't take anything for granted, like even catching a ball, shooting a ball. Like uh, my son just started like a year and a half ago catching stuff and being able to like do stuff like that and you take it for granted even at a young age even to now what what you what you're able to do you know what i'm saying so it's a constant feeling of just like 
I want to not want to say like thank you, but like like wow. And when you when I think about it, in my son's back is like wow. He's he have a tough road road ahead, and I just hope I could prepare him as best as I can. Oh, man, uh, as his stages, his different stages of of autism, and uh, if I was honestly, if I was giving advice, I'd just be like hang in there and just do your best because. The days, it's tough days, man. It's very, very tough days where your son would just be crying and and uh, ranting and and you don't know why. And he just started using his words better, also. And you and you can't just you can't you can't figure out why he's doing it. So I don't I don't know what advice I could give a parent that I haven't probably the same as I give myself or, or that his mother give him as just hang in there and uh just know just just know who you can hope that that the days are coming. I don't know if it's my obligation to my family, but I also feel like it's uh cuz I love to do it. It's it's something that I grew up on. It's like I played basketball for free my whole life before I became a professional, man. And and if I wasn't a professional now, I know for sure I couldn't go seven days straight without still playing basketball. Like it's something I did for free. So um, now it's, I don't know if it's my obligation, but I feel like this is my job now. And And me knowing what my son has and what he's going through back home, that if I know if I play my hardest, if I try to do my best, if I give my all my energy, give all everything I have, that it'll help me along the line of, of cons- um, consistently being able to provide better for him and what he's going through. So in that regard, yes, I feel like I'm obligated to him for that. But in terms of basketball itself, it's something that I would have to basketball is just is just what I love to do, man. It's something that I would that I would do just to do it. Like but when it became my job, I knew that if I continue working hard and hard, that I, it could help make me help my family in better ways. And that's that's just being honest. Well, it, it's the study of people, but with my son, uh, not so much. Only be only only because um, you, it's your son. I feel like I no matter. It's different regarding people you haven't met, but when I see my son, I feel as if, and you you throw out a lot of stuff out what you've learned, for what's yours because the dynamic of how you're trying to raise them, of the person they are changes. So it's not like me using sociology the study of people on my son. I look at him as All right, my son. If he mess up here, I try to fix it. If he's being wrong to me, I'll have a different conversation and trying to make him understand as if someone is doing wrong to me that's someone that I'm not related to. But sociology, I do wish I could, uh, after basketball, get into a field if I'm not into coaching or if I'm not getting into a field of wherever I'm living dealing with sociology because um, because it'll be good. You, you studied it, you've, you've learned it, you've passed it, you've got a degree in it, so... Um, if if that comes up, I'll for sure look into it. He's uh, he's he's been at games of mine in the summertime, where in New York is a lot of summer basketball tournaments, and he's been he's been in he's been in games. He's watched me play in in my junior high school where I grew up. It's called Girls Park. He's watched me he's watched me play there. But if he was to be able to come here, I wouldn't even. It would be so dope for him to watch me play here, but. Just the thought of him being even here would just be, would be it for me. Like, I, cause I know I'll have him for like a month or straight or a month and a half straight. So this that feeling there would be uh, would be a, a extraordinary for me. Just him, just knowing that after a practice, I open the door to the house and he's just there waiting. It's like, it'd be like a dream come true. Just knowing that, and uh, hopefully one day.